My name is Angela Mills. I'm the executive assistant to Paul Bockelman. I'm also one of the three community participation officers for the town of Amherst. I'm honored to be here tonight. Thank you for allowing me to staff this meeting. I will be sharing my screen to review the agenda, but before that, I would like to alert all panelists and members of the public that this meeting is being recorded to the cloud and will be uploaded in the coming days to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and then linked to the African Heritage Reparations Assembly webpage. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access this meeting may do so in the following manner. I would direct you to our town website at www.amherstma.gov, to the calendar at the bottom of the face page or the welcoming page, and the link can be found on the September 28th calendar day via Zoom. Or you can join us by phone by dialing 253-215-8782, and the web ID for this meeting is 891-3421. 8638. No in person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, and public participation at public comment time will be conducted by remote means only. Specific information on the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public can be found on our town website. We will now conduct a sound check and a video check of all panelists. I will call on each panelist as they appear for me on the screen, and I ask that you please introduce yourself. I will then acknowledge that you can be heard and seen, and we will use this sound check as an attendance roll call and then proceed on to the agenda. So my first visual on my screen is Dr. Shabazz. Shabazz present. So I can see you and you can be heard. Thank you. Next, we have Dr. Jemison. Uh, present. Thank you. I can see you and I can also hear you. Next, we have Alexis Reed. Present. Thank you. I can see you and I can also hear you. Next, we have Irv Rhodes. Present. Thank you. I can see you and I can also hear you. Next, we have Heather Halla Lord. I am present. Thank you. I can see you and I can hear you. And um, Town Manager Paul Bockelman. Present. Thank you. I can see you and I can hear you. So the next point of order on your agenda um, is our announcements. Do we have any announcements? No announcements. I will now share my screen and we will review the agenda. Oh, I see a, a raised hand from Dr. Shabazz. Go ahead, please. Just at some point, um, some of us have been discussing uh, the uh, possibilities of um, just talking about what is taking place over at uh, the University of Massachusetts. And uh, I guess that can come up under, under other topics, but just wanted to note that there are some things of concern that we might wanna address at that point. Excellent. I'm making note of that. Thank you so much. So as I share my screen, we are looking at the packet materials which have been updated. And this is your agenda for this evening. We have the call to order, the agenda review, and our next point of order will be the approval of the minutes from your 922 meeting, which we will do by a roll call vote. Then we'll move on to reports and comments. We have public comment and member reports. Under action and discussion items, we have A, moving forward, B, election of officers, which will be run by town manager, Paul Bockelman. We have C, the visioning process exercise, D, the October report to the town council with the next discussion of the extension of deadlines and ex expectations from the town council, E, outreach to community and stakeholders, B, A, A, M, first repair, F, financials, building financial instruments to support recommendations, developing funding mechanisms, tax revenue from cannabis sales, upcoming events, determining the next meeting date, and other topics, which includes the recent events at UMass as part of number six. Okay, so if we can please do a roll call vote to approve 
the minutes from your 9-22-2021 meeting. Do I have any recommended changes to those minutes? Or can we accept them as they are? I think someone should make a motion if they approve them, if you've read them, to make a motion, then a second, and then to do a roll call vote. Sounds good. I cool. will move that we approve the minutes from 922 as they stand. Second. And can we please roll call vote? Let's begin with. Heather Halla Lord. Um, Lord I. Thank you. And Michelle Miller. Yes. And Dr. Jemison. Yes. And Alexis Reed. Yes. And Irv Rhodes. Yes. And Dr. Shabazz. Shabazz, yes. Thank you. Have I missed anyone? Excellent. So moving on, our next order of business is um, public comment. I am opening up the attendees. Attendees, if you would please raise your hand, I will promote you to the panelist room. Please. Identify yourself by your first and last name and where you live in, in the town of Amherst. And we ask that you keep your comments to a brief three minutes. Do we have anyone who would like to speak at public comment? Uh -oh, uh, Looks like not. Okay, moving on. Do we have AHRA member reports? So I think if a member wants something, they just raise their hand and Angela can call on them. Uh, Michelle Miller. Yes, I have a report. Um, with respect to a conversation we had at our last meeting about speaking with first repair to see what availability they may have to work with us. And I did speak with Robin and first repair is very willing and ready to work with us. Um, they're willing to work with us within this committee or any subcommittees we may break out into. Um, Robin stated that we were the first priority behind Evanston, understandably, <laughs> um, and equal to Tulsa. So um, First Repair is working with Evanston, Amherst, and Tulsa. And so however this body decides um, that they would be of support to us, they're ready um, to work with us. And then I also wanted to come back to something we touched on briefly last week about offering public comment at the beginning and the end of the meeting um, to allow for more participation and also to give people the opportunity to comment after they've heard our meeting. Um, so I'm not sure if we need to have a motion in order to make that um, happen or what other folks think about that, but I, I wanted to bring that up again. Thank you. Paul, I see your hand raised. Yeah, I just wonder, Michelle, many people know what First Repair is, but many people in the audience may not. Do you wanna just summarize what that organization is and what they do and why the town is interested in connecting with them? Yeah, thank you, that's great. Um, so First Repair is um, led by former Alderwoman Robin Rue Simmons, who led the reparations effort in Evanston, which is the first municipality in the country to put together a reparations program. And we've been working with Robin for quite a while throughout the entire process. 
Um, and now she has she has moved away from her position as older woman and is leading this organization um, and is fully funded to do so. So services um, that First Repair provides are at no cost to the municipalities that they are providing services to. So it's a wonderful opportunity for us to engage with Robin and uh, the resources that First Repair has put together and um, to, to be supported in our work. Are there others who have reports? Dr. Shabazz, I see your hand. I have a report, um, and uh, but we have it under action and discussion items, so I'm prepared to offer it there um, if I uh, may be permitted the time to do so. Absolutely. Michelle, is it okay if I refer to you as Michelle during this meeting? Yes. Okay, so your um, suggestion or your, um, re you were reiterating about offering public comment twice during the meeting. I think we can also move that to action and discussion items and it can be brought up by the officers if officers are elected tonight or we can insert it after F. Does that sound okay to you? Absolutely, yes. Excellent, Thank you. okay. Not seeing any other hands. Is it okay for me to assume that we don't have any other AHRA member reports this evening? Okay, moving on to number three, action and discussion items. Moving forward is letter A. So I believe that that was, there's a document, either was in the packet or you can show it on the screen from, doc, from Dr. Rhodes on Excellent. Your I'm email. Happy to do that. Sure. Did you want to leave this, Irv? This you see the document. Okay. Huh. I don't believe it's in the packet. Um, I think we received it via an email from Jennifer. Okay. Now, which, which, which one are we talking about anyway? Stop share. Angela, I could email it to you right now. Would that be helpful? Sure, that'd be great. It's millsa at amherstma.gov. It just doesn't seem to be in the redacted packet. Uh, so let me know what document, because that's in a number of them, which one are we talking about? I believe it's so, uh, moving forward. I'm looking to see if maybe Jennifer sent it to me separately. Here we go. Nope. Oh, here it is. Okay. I just sent it to you as well. Thank you. I believe this is what we're looking at. Yes. So this was sent by Irv Rhodes on Friday, September 24th. And is it okay for me to stop right here? Right, that's, that's fine. Okay. Um, I think there's a point of order uh, that's necessary here. Um, 
these are proposals and it seems to me that they may be more appropriately, uh, may appropriately fit under actions uh, because there, these are things that we will have to act on. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, electing uh, co-chairs rather than a chair. Uh, the, the chair, when that comes up, when we talk about electing a chair, then I would make a motion at that particular point in time to elect co-chairs, and that could then be voted on. Uh, the rest of those are, 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 are informational and action items that we need to consider very seriously this evening, especially uh, the ones where the presentations by the town council uh, president and also the town legal uh, council. Uh, more importantly, there, um, I would like to explore whether there are ways that uh, we can use the upcoming elections uh, to further our charge to do a black census. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, what I meant by that is that in the past, the town clerk sent out information packets. I do not know whether they continue to do that uh, to all registered voters. But if there, are, if there is any kind of communication that goes to all registered voters, we may want to tag along with that and ask uh, the questions related to the black census. And then uh, have the chair of the finance committee, Andy, uh, Steinberg come before us to do a presentation. And, and that would be important, obviously, in terms of the kinds of things we're uh, talking about. And, uh, and lastly, uh, appoint a non-voting liaison from the Black Assembly of Amherst uh, to the committee. So that's it. Thank you. Is there a discussion about these items? Paul, I see your hand. Yep, thank you. Um, so I just want to note that um, at its meeting on Monday night, this sort of fits in with this, but maybe not, the town council uh, elected two members of its uh, two councilor, two councilors to be the liaisons to the um, to the committee. And that's Pat DeAngelis and Alyssa Brewer, and they're both in the audience for you tonight. Thank you. Dr. Jemison. Um, what is the functional difference between uh, having co-chairs and having a chair and a vice chair? Um, just curious about how that matters so I can figure out once we start voting. It's only, it's only a matter of language, a vice chair and a co-chair. Uh, you, you could, some people see a vice chair like a vice president. Uh, however, I'm, however, I'm not referring to that. I am referring to a co-chair and not a vice chair. Thank you. Other questions for discussion? I just would add on to that, uh, Dr. Jimson. Um, in, in my experience, um, the in a case where um, I was vice chair of the uh, regional school committee, um, it it can be very it can be unclear what uh, precisely uh, that means, um, just as it can be unclear what precisely co-chair means. Um, presumably, or as it came up down the line, it might have meant that um, the vice chair would be included in agenda formulation, particularly in the case of the regional school committee where we interacted with the superintendent in formulating the agenda, it was, um, uh, it, it would have been very um, uh, useful to uh, have been, in, been a real part of that as a vice chair such that if in the case of the co-chair becoming unable to um, uh, to act as the the chair being able to uh, act as chair, that the the vice chair could step in. It's helpful if they've already been a part of that. But when the person in the chair role doesn't invite you 
to do anything and leaves you to the side, then effectively the vice chair is just a title and it means nothing. Um, that could be the same case in a co-chair relationship if, the, if, if, if it's left vague, if it's left unclear as to what are, what are the ways in which those elected in a co-chair relationship are to relate to things like agenda formulation, to things like being the public face of the, of the public body. These are some of the things typically reserved to, uh, to a chair or chair and vice chair or co-chairs, but you have to articulate at some point what those, uh, um, what the terms mean. Otherwise, it's just vague language with no real clarity. Uh, can I, I'd like to interject here. Um, you know, um, Dr. Chabaz is, is correct in, in one sense, uh, if it's not uh, defined. Uh, so let me try to define it. Uh, we have a number of tasks that need to be done. We have a very short schedule uh, in terms of the time that we need to get this done. The workload uh, on the chair is going to be tremendous. And what I was thinking about was that uh, this, the co-chairs could share that workload. I would see this as the co-chair and the co-chair, uh, the, co the chair the co-chairs being co-equal, all right? And, 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 and by that, I mean that we would share the duties that would be traditionally that of the chair. Uh, and we would do that on a going forward uh, basis and doing it on a, a collaborative and cooperative basis. We would obviously, um, given what I'm saying, uh, if we are going to vote for co-chairs, we would um, have to define that more definitively to the satisfaction of the members. Thank you. That, that is, uh, both of those were helpful. Um, so <laughs> do we go on now to talk further about that or, or to go ahead and move to vote and then we have to decide if it's co-chairs or chairs? Uh, are we are we in the in the process of um, doing a vote on chairs? Or are we going to just uh, stick with uh, a voting rather to have whether to have co-chairs and then move to the nomination of co-chairs? So I see Paul's hand, Paul. Right. So it's typical. What would happen in a situation in in this when you're electing officers? is that a neutral party, i.e. that's me in this situation, would um, conduct an election for the chair. Um, and I think the first question for the committee is going to be, do you want chair, vice chair, or co-chairs? And that, that has not been determined yet. When Just so you ha know how we will conduct the election is that um, I will ask for nominations and you can self-nominate if you'd like to be a chair. There does not need to be a second. Um, I will ask the person who's been nominated if they accept the nomination. Then there's no argument, there's no sort of nomination speech or anything like that. It's just putting a name forward. Um, I will go and we will keep the nominations open until there are no further nominations. Then whoever's been nominated, I will ask them to make a, a brief statement on being elected to chair why they would like to do that up to three minutes. And then we call, call a roll call vote, in which case we will go around the room and people will say the person that they want to serve as chair or whatever office that we're trying to fill at that time. Uh, if no nominee receives a majority of votes, we'll repeat the process. So if everybody, if all um, all six people are nominated, you all nominate yourselves and you all vote for yourselves and there's not a, a clear winner, then we go through the process again. So that's how the process works. And then whoever is elected to that position assumes the leadership of the meeting from then, that point on. Thank you, Paul. I think given that input, it would, and if we're moving on to item B in our agenda, it would be um, uh, right out the gate necessary to see if there is a motion to uh, go with a co-chair arrangement. And, um, and then from there, we could then proceed to uh, call for, for those, for nominations. And then if we have, if we say two co-chairs, then um, it would be those, the highest mm -hmm. vote getters of the, of the two. Does that sound right? Yes, it does, Dr. Shabazz. So in that situation, I guess, is there a motion on 
no, the normal course is to have chair and vice chair. So if someone would like to make a motion, um, Mr. Rhodes, you had offered the co-chair model. Is that a motion you'd like to make? I'd like to make a motion for uh, co-chairs okay. and co-chair this assembly. Is there a second to that motion? I second it. Okay, seconded by Dr. Shabazz. Uh, any discussion on the motion? And this is a time for you to make a comment or ask a question or for ask for clarification from the sponsor. I, I would like to make a comment. Um, when I thought about co-chair, it was, it, was, it was in relationship to uh, A, the workload um, that uh, is going to be forthcoming, and B, the skill sets uh, that are available within the membership. Um, there are uh, members who have skills and uh, skills that are related to finance and budget uh, and relationships with uh, town council and, uh, and with the uh, finance committee. And then there are members who have extraordinary experience in relationship to um, outside uh, groups such as uh, the ones that were brought up by Michelle uh, and also uh, by Dr. Shabazz last week. Uh, and those are the kinds of things that we're gonna need uh, moving forward um, as we uh, go forward with this process. So, uh, and the other thing was uh, that it would be, uh, the co-chairs would be able to share those duties as well as be uh, co-spokespersons uh, 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 for the committee. Are there other comments people want to make? That I think we can call the question. Okay, so ready for the vote. So because we're meeting virtually, all votes have to be done by roll call. So I'll just go through uh, in terms of who's in my, on my screen. Uh, and so the a question, the vote yes means you would like to have co-chairs. A vote no means that you would have a traditional chair, vice chair format. So I'll just start with my screen. Uh, Michelle Miller? No. Okay. Uh, Heather Lord? Lord abstain. Okay. Um, Alexis Reed? Um, yes. Okay. Dr. Jemison? Jemison, yes. Dr. Shabazz? Yes. Mr. Rhodes? Yes. So the motion passes uh, by vote of three to one with one abstention. Is that right? No, four to one with one abstention. Thank you. So the committee has decided that it would like to have co-chairs in its leadership role. So the next order of business will be to choose the co-chairs that you'd like to serve, have serve in that function. So now the floor is open for nominations. Remember that we have to elect, I'm assuming, two co-chairs. So the floor is open for nominations. Mr. Rhodes. I nominate myself for one of the co-chair positions. Okay, thank you. Other nominations? M Michelle Miller. I nominate myself as one of the co-chair positions. Okay. okay. Uh, other nominations? Alexis, do you have your hand up? Is it? Do we nominate somebody else or can we only you, nominate ourselves? You can nominate someone else or or nominate yourself either way. Okay. I'm, I'm going to think about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Michelle Miller, you still have your hand up or is that an intentional? Okay. So the floor is still open for nominations. And you can nominate someone else, you can nominate yourself or um, Alexis if, Reed. Thank you. Um, I, if, so I, how do I say this? I think that it's important if, if we have two co-chairs that are, you know, equal, I, I find it important that they hold um, different, experiences and um th that you know sort of don't fall into the same categories um so um i i would love for a a black femme to also be a part of our our lead 
people, Sorry. but I also don't want to do it. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> well, you can nominate <laughs> someone and, and they can just choose if they want to accept the nomination or not. So why don't you nominate someone? Okay, I'm, I've, I, I, I nominate Dr. Jemison if, if, you, if you would so like it. <laughs> Dr. Jemison, do you accept the nomination? I will accept the nomination. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Jemison, is it? so the floor is still open for nominations. Are there other nominations? Anyone else? Seeing none, I will close nominations. And now the process, so we have three nominees. We have Irv Rhodes, Michelle Miller, and Jamila Jemison. Um, so the um, the way we'll do this is we'll go, uh, we'll, I'll call in your name and ask you to name the co two co-chairs that you would like to see. I think, let's see, how would that, is that the best way to do it? Um, we could do it one of two ways. One is I can ask everyone to name I think that's the best way. Is any other suggestions you have on how best to do this for co-chairs? Michelle Miller, do you have an idea? Do we each as nominees have an opportunity to oh, make yes. a statement? Oh yes, my, my bad, you're right, absolutely right. I should have read. So, okay, so Mr. Rhodes, if you'd like to make a comment of up to three minutes, thank you for that, Michelle. Well, the reason that I uh, want to uh, be a co-chair is that um, well, there are a number of reasons. The main ones being that um, a lot of our decisions are going to be around what are we going to use the funds for and where are the funds going to come from? How are we going to be to determine uh, those funds? Um, me, uh, I, have, I have an enormous amount of experience with uh, the town in relationship to the finance committee and budgets. I've been on the finance committee as, uh, as, a, as a member and also on the budget coordinating, uh, coordinating group. Uh, uh, the other part of that is um, you, you need, this position will need someone who will be able to work very closely, not only with the finance committee, but also with members of the town council. I have very good relationships uh, with various members of the town council, having worked with them on a number of different uh, different uh, occasions. Uh, and I believe that that will be valuable. The other thing is that I have a particular uh, focus with this particular committee in terms of moving forward in an expeditious uh, uh, matter, uh, manner because of, as I had pointed out before, uh, we have only one budget season to get uh, these proposals through. And, and when you look at what our schedule is, and then when you look at what we have to do in relation, relationship to the town council and their meeting schedule, it, it, it even shrinks that further. I believe that I can uh, have the expertise to be able to move these things forward uh, for the committee. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Um, Michelle Miller, you have three minutes. And I'm reading from a statement just because it's a little easier for me to get my thoughts together before. <laughs> um, I'd like to offer a slightly different perspective on the role of chair. I come to this committee with a deep conviction that white people are responsible for ensuring that reparations are made for people of African descent. I do not intend to assert an opinion on substantive matters related to how reparations should be made unless I am asked. I do intend to work hard to support this group in any way I am needed. In my experience watching dozens of town council and committee meetings, the role entails holding space for members and making sure participation is equitable. My sole intention is to free up the members of African descent on the committee to engage in discussion without the added burden of facilitation. I nominate myself in the spirit of service and commitment to reparations for people of African heritage. Thank you. Dr. Jemison. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, so 
I am interested in, and willing to serve in a co-chair role um, because my my main purpose for being on this community this committee is to um, uh, maybe not drive uh, but steer. I'm, I'm here for the doing. Um, I think this issue is important, but I'm well aware that I'm not the expert on it. Um, and so my goal was to take in all the information that was available and always be trying to be attentive to where we're heading and how we're focusing and then helping us move forward as you know as quickly as possible there simply because it is clear from our charter that uh, we have not quite enough time to handle a very complex uh, topic. Um, as for the sort of two halves of this, which are the community side and the, the budget side, I have much more experience on the budget side. Um, that's what I do for work. I'm a, a director of a team. We have large budgets to manage for all of our projects going on through the year. So I'm usually the person who plans and reviews those budgets as we go forward. So uh, while I'm not as personally acquainted with uh, the folks here in Amherst who would help us get this done on the town level, I'm, I'm very happy with the spreadsheet in front of me and uh, figuring out all the ways we can get the dollars and cents to, to come together for the, for the two bits of, of this um, reparations that we're trying to bring forward uh, and go on this journey. So, Thank you. Um, now, uh, this is the time for discussion amongst the council members. And then after the discussion, we go to the vote. So are, are there council member, or sorry, council, sorry, committee members um, who, who would like to have a comment about that? And uh, Dr. Shabazz, you have your hand up. Yes, so I have um, one concern uh, with our pl pr pr uh, present slate and with someone within that present slate that I would like to uh, vote for. However, I would um, uh, like to present a concern that I have, see what people think, and one possible answer I think to the concern might be that if we could take a vote to have a, um, uh, to, uh, to revisit the chair role at our point uh, in, in January. And so in other words, we're not electing uh, the co-chairs to serve for the duration of our existence as a committee, but we would be reserving it. Um, we would be able to revisit who are in the co-chair roles uh, in, the, in January. And so here's the concern. Um, Michelle Miller is presently a candidate for um, a district uh, level position on the, uh, on the town council. Um, in fact, that race is uncontested. So barring uh, something unforeseen, uh, she will be a, a uh, counselor and uh, will be sworn into that role as I understand sometime in January. I feel that the um, at that point, while I would love to see her in uh, this uh, this role and and appreciate the way that she presented how she would approach the uh, the work of it as co-chair, I would want to be able to revisit that um, at the point that she becomes a uh, a counselor. The um, as in, in my humble opinion, the um, as a counselor for a specific district, her first and foremost priority or loyalty uh, will be to her district, and um, and so to then be uh, poised on this uh, committee as a co-chair, and then at the same time having to represent her district, I wouldn't want to to complicate that. Uh, in in the in relation to to the role that that she would be playing, and so uh, depending on how others felt, it's something I might want to revisit um, in in Jan um, in January at the point that she would take on that counselor role. I think that she would, in that position, be able to represent and um, uh, and work with her other counselors on whatever recommendations we'll make. At the at the completion of our work, um, but uh, 
and, and along the way, of course, keeping them all abreast to our work. But uh, in my view, that would be something I would just like us to be able to, to revisit at the point that, that uh, she would be sworn in. I don't know if anyone else have any concerns about that. Okay. Um, I, Thank uh, you, Dr. Shabazz. Are there other comments that we'd like to have? If you can raise your hand. Mr. Rhodes. Yes, um, I really appreciate uh, what you just uh, stated, um, Dr. Shabazz, uh, because that's a really important point. Um, and, um, and obviously, um, come January, um, having to um, sort of switch gears uh, would be somewhat prob problematic. However, given the schedule that we're on and given the um, schedule of the town council and, uh, and our schedule in terms of going through the budget process, which is really important and something that I really want us to focus on and I would like to lead us through that budget process as we identify the sources of funding and then take that onward, uh, that that is the that the majority of our work, and I would uh, would advise people to go back and look at the budget's uh, schedule and timeline, that uh, if Michelle were um, elected co-chair to, tonight, that the majority of that work would already have been done because January uh, would be at the uh, almost at the end of some of the uh, presentations and voting that would have already have taken place. So yes, the major uh, I agree with with you, um, Dr. Shabazz, that that would be a consideration that we would re revisit it in January. And I and I also see that uh, having Michelle as co chair co chair starting. Uh, tonight and going through till, till, till January uh, would not be detrimental to the progress of this committee. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Are there other comments on the nominees or how people think it may want to vote or anything like that? This is a comment where you get three minutes if you want to comment. You can just raise your hand. Seeing no further comments, um, then we will be move on to the vote. And this is a vote to elect two co-chairs to lead uh, the committee. Um, and so I will ask you, I'll call on your name and ask you to name two names of the people you think you would like to serve as your co-chairs. Um, so I'll st start with Dr. Shabazz. Thank you. With that, with the proviso I've, I've raised, then uh, Jemison and uh, Miller. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rhodes. Uh, myself and Miller. Okay. Uh, Ms. Lord. Dr. Jemison and Michelle Miller, please. Okay, thank you. Ms. Miller. Dr. Jemison and myself. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Jemison. Uh, um, Ms. Miller and uh, Mr. Rhodes. And Ms. Reed. Um, Dr. Jemison and Michelle Miller. Okay. So did anybody help count? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six votes for Michelle Miller. I've got one, two, three, four for Dr. Jemison. Is this right for everybody counting? And two for Mr. Rhodes. Does that line up with everybody's count? Okay. So our co-chairs um, are Dr. Jemison and, and Ms. Miller. And so I turn it over to you as your co-chairs and you can decide how you wanna run the rest of the meeting. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating. Dr. Jemison, do you have a preference? Would you like to <laughs> facilitate us through the next to the next agenda item? Um, <laughs> um, actually, can I can I lean on you, <laughs> your expertise in this uh, this one? This is a pleasant surprise, but. <laughs> 
<laughs> take a minute to get adjusted. Of course, yeah. And I don't have a ton of expertise either, so um, I'll, I'll do the best that I can here. Um, so we just completed election of officers and it looks like we'll be moving to visioning process exercise that uh, Dr. Jemison provided to us and is in the packet. I don't know if that can be brought up. I believe it's in the packet. It is. It's Angela again. I'm happy to share my screen if that's what you'd like. Maybe we can take just a moment to look it over again and then um, move into discussion. <clears throat> and um, I would also say, uh, Dr. Jemison, this was something that you put together. So if you um, want to speak specifically to what your process was in coming up with this um, visioning exercise, that would be great too. Certainly. Um, and I can do that while you're looking. Yeah, we're right here. Scroll. There we go. Um, so I, I believe it was actually Dr. Shabazz who said the word visioning. <laughs> um, and so, uh, and I thought, gosh, that's always such a wonderful thing to do. And then um, I, I think I have a, a certain amount of Irv Rhodes sitting on one shoulder um, because I also am very concerned about time and, and, and feel the urgency here. So um, what I wanted to try to capture, uh, or rather these three questions were my attempt to have a very um, goal outcome sort of definition focused way to ask about the, the two things that I'm taking out of uh, what our sort of actual call to action is, um, which is that reparations is a holistic thing. And what we seem to have been asked to plan is um, something that is both around kind of the healing of, of the, the emotional and societal wounds and uh, the repairing uh, financially. And so I, I just started with these, these very simple questions and they're sort of parallel. Um, and the first one is, you know, honestly, do you, do you believe in a monetary type of compensation as a reparation? And if so, what would that look like to you? And I'm hoping people had a chance to at least, you know, have a few thoughts on that. And then similarly, do you believe that there's a need for these uh, sort of non-compensation based reparations and what would those look like to you? And then uh, brass tacks in the third question, uh, both of these reparations types of reparations will take funding. Um, however we decide to pay people and however we decide to pay for the types of activities that will be on the more healing side, we're gonna need some money for that. And so is that, um, when I say one stream of funding or two, what I'm thinking of is would we be asking for separate accounts basically for the, the two and uh, to go from there. So I see that you have a question, uh, Irv. Yes, I, I think that this is uh, actually problematic uh, at this point in time to do these specific things because these are actual action items that will be coming up for a vote. Uh, at some point, and we haven't even gotten to that point. So to go through this and uh, and ask the kinds of questions you're asking is uh, is uh, is I think um, on the one hand it's a it's a good thing, but on the other hand, I believe that uh, this we would be taking almost taking votes or offering opinions on the votes that are going to be coming up on these very topics. Thank you for, for saying that. And I'm, I'm interested to hear if other people had interpreted it that way or had other questions or, or thoughts about these. Dr. Shabazz. Thank you. What I might, um, I think this is a, a great start for, uh, for our own thinking, our own uh, development of what I'd like to call a, uh, a set of FAQs. Um, I don't think we're voting on that or going to uh, develop those this evening, but um, when I use the term visioning, it really had to do with how do we begin to, um, uh, how do we envision this whole process and what are we, what are we looking toward? We can, we can get very much into, uh, no pun intended, into the weeds of, of this work 
and uh, and trying to uh, develop funding uh, mechanisms and and whatnot. But if we don't have uh, and assert uh, some leadership about you know why this is the case, what we're looking for, and that could really come in the form of F FAQs. So I think it's just important enough tonight to me to uh, to uh, to to kind of sit with these questions for us to uh, to take them and uh, 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 think about them and uh, and maybe as we uh, proceed, uh, it's something that we might think about or 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 uh, uh, you. Voting for uh, to approve a certain certain a set of FAQs, something that could help to articulate and educate uh, our position on some of these things, and and uh, where what what we're recommending the community itself might want to think about and read and know about regarding some of these questions. So I'm certainly comfortable with these being for reflection and the sort of beginning of uh, personal percolation. Um, as, as someone who's always concerned about time, <laughs> I, I, I know that uh, going into sort of a round table around this might, uh, when, it's, when it's not intended for a vote, um, I did not put these questions out with intention of a vote, um, just merely as a way to start people's thinking. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the, these have been seen um, uh, by the members and, and read, and uh, hopefully they'll lodge in your brain and, and kick kickstart your thinking. Um, Michelle, how do you feel about what we proceed to next? Yeah, are there any other comments um, with respect to this and, and to the comments that have been made? If we're comfortable with letting these questions sit and reflecting on them, um, then I think that we could move forward to the next topic, uh, which would be the October report to town council. Is there any objection to doing that? Ms. Reed has her hand up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have that button right now to raise my hand. So I'm just <laughs> doing that. Um, I guess I'm wondering, um, knowing that we are on a time crunch, especially with regards to when we are supposed to report in order to be able to fund these potential things, I'm wondering at what point are, are we expecting to sort of be on the same page in, in channeling? Because I, I, I'm already, you know, hearing based off of past conversations that maybe we won't even agree about, you know, where the funds will go. And so I guess I'm wondering, you know, are we extending the point by which we are determining how many funds and all of the funds and where they're coming from simply because we don't, or, you know, to the point at which we will, you know, decide and agree on these things. I guess I'm, I'm wondering like the timeline um, and, and, and what um, benefit it is to, um, I, I agree that we should, you know, these are heavy questions and that we should wait, but I'm, I, I'm also wondering how long we are supposed to like sort of wait and ruminate on on these things. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Dr. Shabazz? Yes, Alexis, I think that segues into our next item. Yeah, okay. So if there aren't any um, more points of discussion, let's move into the next item on our agenda, October report to town council, which includes extension of deadline and expectation from town council. And perhaps Dr. Shabazz, you wanna provide an update based on any discussions you may have had with uh, town council members? Thank you. I'm sharing a screen right now that just highlights some notes uh, for what I have to say on this and and uh, and beyond. And so let me just move uh, right away to say that um, I had the occasion um, on the question of the extension of uh, the deadline question uh, regarding the October report to town council. That's in our uh, that's in our charge. That's in our uh, enabling. Uh, what creates this assembly. I um, had the occasion to check in with one of our counselors who attended our last meeting, 
Uh, in fact, immediately after our meeting, we talked. Uh, this is Councillor Alyssa Brewer, and um, she um, uh, expressed uh, quite frankly from her standpoint of, as well as from the context of, uh, of, of prior discussions on the town council, that an extension of the deadline is absolutely unnecessary from the town council standpoint. That what is envisioned by this, uh, um, this report at the end of October is, is more of a check-in, not a policy product per se. Uh, they're not forestalling that if we have a specific policy recommendation to make by the end of October, but that was not necessarily what was envisioned in establishing that date. It is merely to check in to say where we are um, uh, and what we're doing and, uh, and where, where we're headed. So, um, of course, Councillor, she in that discussion, she uh, getting into the expectations of town council. Um, uh, Councillor Brewer mentioned that uh, um, she intended to continue uh, attending. That the council had discussed liaisons attending or watching the recordings if they couldn't be present at all of our our uh, uh, meetings um, as they occurred. Uh, they could then follow up and watch the recordings. And uh, in order to stay abreast of our deliberations and to keep the council informed about our work. So again, um, the, uh, uh, the question of the, of the report should be uh, that it is an opportunity that we can speak to the entire council about how we're approaching the fulfillment of our charge and identify any action items we may need from them uh, through the town manager or or, uh, or, or 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 actions that we need the council to take itself. Finally, the final report is where it is envisioned that we will overall fulfill our charge and offer a policy plan and structural recommendations. Again, that doesn't forestall relative to the budget cycle or relative to recommendations we, we might want to make before then, but that overall um, the expectation from the council side is that um, the overall fulfillment of our charge is, is envisioned more in the final report, not in this October report. Um, next, I going a little bit beyond the scope of that, um, of those meetings, I was triggered into some thinking that I'd like to present here. And it's toward the, the actual design of a reparative justice plan. Um, the, it, and it's clear to, uh, we ought to be clear that reparations at a local municipal level is not an event. It is not a one-time payout or payoff. It is a process of reparative justice work that we should see as an ongoing process. Uh, the reparative justice plan, RJP, as I referred to it, um, is something that should uh, aim to address harms but also connect with and prepare our town, prepare the town of Amherst for true reparations, which is what will happen at a federal level. The federal legislation is Senate Bill 40, House Resolution 40, and it is there that true reparations will occur, okay, in terms of, a, of, of something that, that uh, could close the wealth gap. As wealthy as our town is, there is not enough wealth here to fundamentally close the wealth gap. Uh, uh, that that is the fun, one of the fundamental harms of uh, that we're trying to address. Finally, I would say that key points in our work that we want to be able to check in on by the end of October and look to fulfill in our overall uh, report is one, the funding instrument. Two a continuing African-American people-led committee charged with assessing the needs of the town in those areas identified by the reparative justice plan and recommending relevant expenditures to town council. That would be an ongoing committee. That is, we're, we, we're term limited. We have a, 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 a date certain to, uh, to go out of existence, 
But I think what we're trying to create is the infrastructure that continuing committee within the town that would um, uh, uh, work to uh, assess the needs uh, identified by a reparative justice plan and make the recommendations of relevant expenditures to town council. This is my view. I don't think we're aiming to do that in this cycle by October or by uh, uh, our uh, the the time that we have been uh, slated to uh, to uh, go out of existence. Finally, our work should involve a visioning of options as to how reparative justice plan funds are to be spent, and it should be an expansive view of this eligibility criteria that has sometime been floated around. And when I say an expansive view, it is one that we should not be the fundamental informants on, that we need to seek uh, a guidance from the Black community. And that is the role in which uh, the Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts was created to serve. So those are just um, uh, the reflections I'd like to present. I, I welcome um, the uh, uh, any questions and consideration of those items. Are there any comments about Dr. Shabazz's presentation? The only the only question is how how where do we place them uh, in terms of this meeting and in terms of the meeting and also in terms of the agenda. And also, uh, those some of those items uh, seem to be action items again, which would require a vote. So uh, I think the co-chairs need to take that document and look at it and, and put it into some kind of form for future meetings. I don't think that um, that is something that we should be voting on tonight because a it wasn't a part of the agenda, uh, and uh, b uh, to go into discussion of it would take. Uh, more time than I think we want to spend this evening. Dr. Shabazz? Yes, thank you. Um, uh, just to be clear, I'm not offering any of that as an action item. The first part of it is just the report that uh, from the standpoint of my investigation uh, with the town councilor, that the town council does not expect us to have a uh, to, expects us to have a check-in in this October report, not a not uh, 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 not necessarily a complete set of recommendations about our work, um, but just where we are and if there are action items that's that's welcomed in that October, but that's not their expectation of us. So that's point of information, just to perhaps put to rest the idea of an action item about you know voting to to request an extension of our deadline. I don't think it's necessary from what I'm from what I I learned from um, from my investigation. So I just present that to the body. The uh, as far as the second part, that's also not meant for um, uh, any action item. However, I um, if not this meeting, perhaps on the next, I would like us to consider the idea of subcommittees subcommittees that aren't subject to open meeting law where we can really, uh, uh, you know, in, in two or three of us can get together with whomever else we need to get together to bring back to this body to then deliberate and, and develop policy on or developed action items on. The number one subcommittee I see is the, is the fund. Uh, subcommittee, the funding um, subcommittee, and um, I see, it, and consistent with what uh, or what you presented, Dr. Rose, you presented in your moving forward item uh, earlier in the meeting. I think this is um, an area where we can address some of the questions you raised in that in that moving forward piece. That it is here that we could proceed to uh, in that subcommittee that we could proceed to get with legal counsel that we could proceed to get with the finance uh, committee or, or whomever, or, or the chief financial finance officer and get all of the information that we need about being able to make recommendations within this current cycle of the, of the town council to, so that we don't miss the boat on uh, getting the council to act 
on uh, 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 any any funding recommendations we might we might make. I am prepared to to uh, uh, raise the question of at least one subcommittee we ought to be moving to create, and that's a funding uh, subcommittee. And we will have a chance to talk about that under the financials portion of the meeting. So um, thank you, Halla. I wanted to thank Dr. Shabazz for the um, the document that you shared. I'm a slower learner or processor, so I will need a little time to um, review it, let it sink in. And also thank you, Dr. Jemison, for your what you forwarded in and or Rhodes. Thank you all. I, I'm grateful to be on this um, committee with you all. And then, sorry, just to take up time and speak, but I want us to also check if we can about open meeting law. Um, I don't know if it's different if you're elected versus appointed, but our current council at um, the district told us if there's more than one of us present and it's a subcommittee, then we have to adhere to open meeting laws. So I don't know if we wanna really double check the fine line around that to see whether we can meet without doing this public thing or not. And that's all for now. Thank you. That's, uh, by the way. Uh, uh, just, oh, sorry, Irv, could we just have um, Town Manager Bockelman um, speak um, with respect to that? That's that's a that's a really important piece that Hala has raised. I just did the research on it. Th thank you, Michelle. So the so the, the the committee that you're on is a public body and any committees that you create are public bodies as a result of that. So if you delegate something out other than one individual, which can't be a, per, a body, but if you delegate, delegate a subset of your group, that is a body that also has to be posted uh, and the conversation has to be a, a public conversation. So it's the 48 hour rule about posting a meeting in advance. It's, and for people who have not served on public bodies before, it's incredibly, I know three of you have already, but it's incredibly cumbersome. We understand that, but that's the idea of transparency in local government um, to try to let people see how you are deliberating the work that you're doing. Can I say something? Yes, go ahead, Irv, yes. The research that I did uh, um, under frequently asked questions about the open meeting law on 32B-19, subcommittees are not public bodies, public bodies subject to the open meeting law. For example, a school committee with seven members may create a subcommittee. So I would invite you to look that up uh, under, uh, I had sent the uh, link to that to um, all the members uh, and it was mainly one was looking at communication between members. But then um, when, I, when, I was, when I proposed the um, subcommittees, I went further and looked up subcommittees and because that was the first question, can you have subcommittees and not be subject to um, open meeting laws? And, um, and, and, and Paul, you can look this up but what I came up with and what was a part of that uh, that was put out by, um, by the state uh, said that, um, that um, subcommittees are not public bodies and they're not subject to open meeting laws. Dr. Shabazz. Thank you, and I will also in in um, what I guess I really want to do is to invite you know Paul to give us his take on how how do we um, if if Alex and 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 Dr. Jemison wanted to break off and uh, be able to do some research on certain parts of of our charge, is there any? Is there any way to do that? Um, in my experience, whether maybe you don't even call it a subcommittee, but like a working group, uh, if it's even advisory to you and something not necessarily created out of this public body, but if it's just advisory to you, is there a way that we can be more nimble and more efficient and not have to go through 
postings and open meeting law restrictions. If a non quorum of us, say two members of us, wanted to work together to break off to to get some of this work done, can you give us any any guidance or help or idea about that? So it's a difference. If, so you are a public body. So if if um, if there is some to differentiate. So if the town manager as an independent authority or the superintendent of schools has the strict authority that can act on their own, I can uh, I can ask people to to confer to me as long as it comes to me and I make the decision. Uh, that's not the case in this for you because you're a bot, you're a body, a public body. You're going to vote on something and make a recommendation or make a decision about things. So anybody who anything that you do as a subset of you becomes a subject to the um, open meeting law. I mean, the, the things are exempt. There are certain things that are exempt from the open meeting law, such as, you know, working on logistics. And that's what the co-chairs typically will do. What's the agenda that's coming up? You know, when or what's our meeting schedule? All those types of things. Who can, who do we need to bring to the meetings? That's what the co-chairs typically would do. Um, but in turn, and I, you know, I'll, I'll get some research done on it. It's just, I was trying to do that in real time for us. Um, but typically if you're creating a committee, um, individuals can obviously go off and do whatever they need. Um, but um, so, and I just, I do, we do happen to have a open meeting law expert in the room. Not outside That's what the room. I was going to say. <laughs> so I'll step aside. And can we bring Alyssa into the meeting for a moment to speak to this? Because I think that she has a great deal of knowledge about this particular subject. Through you, Coach, Madam Co-Chair, I'd be glad to, to, to allow that. Great. Okay. So Angela, if we can bring Alyssa in, uh, that would be wonderful. Thank you, Angela. And to be clear, the question is, what is a working way, say on the funding piece, if two of us could be, schedule meetings, go and talk to, and it not be a violation. Alyssa, you're muted. Thank you so much for asking. And as the material that I sent along about liaisons is we don't normally talk, right? We normally watch and then we're asked questions as needed. So thank you so much for asking. Um, I, I feel a little bad for Paul because he knew I was watching him really carefully to see what words he said about open meeting law. Um, I'm sorry, Irv, but your reference is factually incorrect. Your research is wrong. Um, that is something that's either out of date or out of context. It is absolutely true that back when you were serving on school committee and I had been on school committee before you, there were times that we would have these subgroups, like two or three, right? Because it was sub quorum and we thought that was cool. It wasn't. It was illegal then, and it's been made very clear in subsequent rulings by the Division of Open Government that it is in fact illegal. Is it crazy difficult to manage? Absolutely. I mean, right? Just two people want to get together. You have to post a meeting. Like, that's nuts. Unfortunately, it's also the, tr the case. Um, what you can do to, you know, to try and deal with it is you can separate, like here at the meeting, you can say, okay, well, you said you're going to work on this, like when Shabazz called me, um, you're going to work on this and you're going to work on that. And then we'll all bring our pieces back to the meeting. And certainly two of you can get together for coffee because you just come up with some brand new idea on your own. That's not, that's okay. But you cannot be assigned by the committee to do something and not have a posted meeting unless there's just one of you. It's really unfortunate and it makes work so much harder and it takes so much longer. That's also why you have to be super careful about the emails you send ahead of time because those emails also express opinions about the work or what you think needs to be done next or you're just trying to prepare people, which is all like totally reasonable stuff that any other body that wasn't subject to open meeting law would do, right? I wanna be efficient between meetings. I'm gonna give people the reading material. I'm gonna tell them my opinion totally reasonable. Unfortunately, not at all allowed under open meeting law. So emails that are being sent should only be sent to either, should be sent to the chair 
And then they have to figure out if it's something that would violate open meeting law or if it's just a matter of, hey, I need to change the meeting date because something came up. Um, you can occasionally just say something like, I want to add an agenda item, but you can't give the argument for why you want to give the agenda item. So again, that just comes back to like every single thing, Paul put it really well, and I'm using way too many words, but Paul put it really well about the transparency issue. It's so the community knows what's going on because they know that if two people have been assigned to work on something, they need to be able to be a part of that. So one thing that some people do to make it a little bit more easy, practically speaking, is they kind of pick a date and time and say, every Thursday, this subcommittee is gonna meet at 10 o'clock and then they just post a bunch of those saying what they're gonna be and we will work with staff to figure out posting. And then if you have to cancel, you cancel, but then like it's already done and it's not quite as much trauma. But unfortunately there is no such thing as subcommittees that aren't subject to open meeting law. Now, if just one of you wants to get together with five other people that aren't on your committee to do something, then that's fine, but not two of you. Thanks so much for asking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and I, I apologize for all these points of clarification. I just want to make sure we're tight and doing the letter of the law. So we only have six right now. So a quorum, I'm still confused. I don't know if it's three or four. So I would recommend that if we're going to email the chair something that could be a violation if it's forwarded to more than, if we email both chairs, it's three of us. So we might be in violation. So I just recommend clearing that up, say, which chair do we, I don't know. There might be some clarity we need around that if we'll violate the quorum by emailing both chairs. Thank you. Paul, I thought I saw you shake your head not to put you on the spot. But. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. So the committee is a quorum, a quorum is four people. So, yeah. Great. Okay. So that was a good clarification. Thank you. And so coming back to this item of the October report, based on Dr. Shabazz's outreach to Councilor Brewer, um, it sounds like we are okay to provide an update about where we are in October. And I think what I heard is that we don't need an extension of the deadline, um, but I'm curious if that's what other people understood uh, with respect to Dr. Shabazz's input on that. Was, was that report due on the 4th? Can you say that one more time? Uh, yeah, I was wondering, I, I, I didn't think it was due on the 4th. I thought it was at the 30th of October. Is that correct or, or am I wrong? When was that first report due? That's a good question. Um, I think it was October 30th, uh, but did somebody mention the 4th? I think it says, October on the, it says on the website, a proposed municipal reparations plan to the town council by October 31, 2020, and a final report at the completion of the assembly's work. Great, thank you. I also understood that we do not need to request an extension for the October report. Excellent. And do we feel like we need any further clarification from town council members about their expectations with respect to this report? I am wondering if, um, do we just need one or more of us to go to town council? I guess I'm wondering in, in, in lieu of something written, or maybe we're still providing something written, like, yes, what, what should happen? Or is it the liaison being here and we just tell them? Paul, do you want to speak to that? So it's the liaison's role to watch your meetings after the meeting, watch in real time. Both liaisons are here watching your meeting in real time right now. Um, it's their job to listen, pay attention to what you do, and then report that to the full council. So there's not a need for you to, to proactively report to the council unless the committee chooses to do so. I think you should be planning to do something, you know, present something either in person or at least in writing, or for certainly in writing to the council at, by the end of October, though. Yeah. 
Yeah, that that will be a good practice to do that. And also for the public, um, for folks who may not be following along the whole way through, it's good to have a written report. So that, that sounds great. And if there aren't any other discussion points on this piece here, we could move on to the next item on the agenda, which is outreach to community and stakeholders, BAM and FIRST Repair. Um, and I gave my, <laughs> I guess I jumped, jumped a little ahead in my member's report and talked about FIRST Repair. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Shabazz if he's available. I think he was, um, going to do the outreach in terms of BAM to discuss that point. Thank you. Um, so BAM right now has been meeting on a monthly schedule. And uh, uh, as with other public bodies, it's not um, uh, you know, it, it's empowered through that, that actual gathering. Uh, there is a subset that um, I have yet to uh, talk to, but I think that some of them are at least following along with these conversations. But um, uh, but uh, as the meeting comes up and as I can get at the, uh, uh, the a certain subset of folks, uh, I am keeping them abreast of what the assembly is doing, uh, this assembly is doing, and seeing how they see fit to to uh, to interact. And uh, and so certainly in terms of as we get to that question of visioning uh, of options of you know what what are the ways in which reparative justice can should unfold, uh, they could certainly be a group that can help uh, inform, give some uh, uh, information from where uh, they're soliciting from uh, Amherst uh, residents of African descent. Irv, I, I know in the email that we looked at in the beginning, you had talked about the possibility of a non-voting um, BAM stakeholder. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm not sure if you want to get into that at this moment, but it might be a good, a good time to, again, um, talk about that, if that's something that the committee okay. would be. I just thought that it would be a good idea if we were able to have a liaison from BAM uh, to uh, this committee. And uh, have, having said that, I also know that uh, that's something that uh, we would possibly have to vote on. So is everybody clear about what and who BAM is as a body? Um, I don't know, Hala potentially, or possibly you may, maybe want to just speak to that if, or, or any of the, no, <laughs> okay. The three members here, Dr. Shabazz, Dr. Rhodes and Hala are all members of BAM, but I'm not sure if Dr. Jemison and Alexis are familiar with BAM. So um, yeah, okay. Um, Dr. Jemison, are you? I'm, I'm the newbie, but uh, I, I can take a guess. But if somebody has a couple sentences on it, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, that would be great. Any, any, thank you, Hala. You will. I hesitate to raise my hand because I'm still um, working on forming the words when I speak publicly. So um, that's just my growing edge. Let's go. What I understand BAM to be is um, a group of Amherst and non-Amherst residents right now working to um, do a black census around, oh wait, I better pause, pause my school committee camera. Um, a black census around the black residents or African heritage residents in Amherst, which I think set the census report said 2000 or 4,000, the number escapes me in this moment. Um, we wanna get as much input from the adults, 18 over stakeholders and constituents about what would you like to see, what would be helpful, um, is reparations even a good idea? Just, just trying to gather as much information from every single person we can find or know about in this town. And some, when we say we're talking with some people outside, some people lived here for 30 years and now they just couldn't buy the house here though. So they're five miles away. Um, so they're just like an advisory. This is way longer than it needed to be. Um, and we've been meeting to figure out how to 
bring reparations or reparative justice requests and stronger than requests to the town to start to repair some of the harm and, and educate and undo. I think that's what, that's what I understand it to be. And we have a couple other people who will have a deeper or different understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Hala. Dr. Shabazz? Did you have your hand up, Dr. Shabazz, or maybe you're frozen? How is my reception now? I'll turn off video. Can I be heard? Am I heard? Yes. Okay, then I'll share this with you um, to supplement what uh, uh, Hala uh, presented. The, um, this is the sort of approved mission statement of the Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts. Its purpose is to serve as a coordinating body for the reparative justice effort in the town of Amherst. Uh, as it says here, the ultimate goal is to win full reparations for Black African descendants residing in the United States. Um, the title uh, as a formal name of the organization uh, is Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts. Um, some of the guidelines that we said it made up of all Black persons of African descent who are residents of the town of Amherst to be able to vote and participate in the consensus building process that results in decisions about reparative justice priorities, residency will be defined as living in the boundaries of uh, the town in a home, apartment, or other dwelling. Uh, U.S. citizenship, however, is not a requirement of membership in BAM. The email where folks can communicate is blackamherst at gmail.com. And again, we, we, so this is where we, we are. Um, there's been a, uh, our desire to, we've been attacking the question of building the black census that Hala mentioned in different ways. One of the things is we are getting more information now um, through the uh, 2020 census in, um, information that's come out um, thanks to the election season going on. I've uh, been privy to getting my hands on the voter roll and with all the names and whatnot. And uh, it's really just a matter of some, some, some staff, some logistical support, some help to then go through things like the voter roll and, um, and try to identify persons of African descent, uh, go through um, every possible means uh, collecting people who, who hear this program, for example, to send to blackamers at gmail.com, their name, their um, uh, uh, email address, any other contact information, uh, um, uh, affirmation that their resident, that their residency is in Amherst to then be included on the list kept abreast of the monthly meetings and, uh, and then involved as we get to that point, get a certain critical uh, number, a critical mass that we're hoping to get involved in the process of, um, of discussing what kinds of priorities, what kinds of actions would really be meaningful in, uh, in, in bringing about repair uh, of, uh, here, in, here in Amherst. So that's just a little bit more and I can make the document that uh, that BAM approved available uh, to this uh, to this assembly uh, through through uh, through the the, uh, the town manager's office and uh, and you can study it more and ask me or Hala or um, Irv uh, any additional questions about it. Thank you for those explanations. And perhaps we can add that to the packet for our for our our, um, our packet as it's growing. That would be great to add. Um, and so, Irv, just to check back in with you, would you like to add adding a BAM liaison um, as a non-voting member of this body to next meeting's agenda? Uh, yes, um, if we can't do it tonight, then definitely yes.
Okay, great. Paolo, do you have your hand up? Yeah. Pardon me if I missed this. Um, right now, I think I see about three members who are pretty consistent at BAM. So we're talking about adding a different liaison just to share the information between the two groups to keep the labor off the three of us that do attend regular. I'm just a little confused why we'd be adding a person and I might've missed it and I apologize if I did. I think that's right, Hala, from my standpoint, it would be that so we can be in more in our role here as members of the African Heritage Reparations Assembly and, and not necessarily uh, addressing questions or, or answering questions on behalf of BAM, but that someone could be a liaison from BAM that could be, uh, uh, that would come and do that. And we, it occurs well, to me that we may want to ask um, town manager Balkelman if that is even a possibility um, to add a non-voting liaison and what process we would need to go through if that's something that this committee would like to consider. So, so it's it doesn't change the committee charge. It's just as the council has a liaison, they can sit in the audience, anybody can sit in the audience and um, and um, be, a, be available and watching your meetings um, and you know can have comment at, at public comment or if you invite them into the room. So um, it, it's not like you're adding a committee member, the council created this committee, so they would be the ones who would have to adjust the council, the committee's charge. But having someone present and available and you could have a section for reporting on your agenda if the co-chairs agree to that. Eric, did you have a follow-up comment? Yes, I, you know, the idea that I had was I, I, I wanted uh, a liaison from BAM to be someone who did not and was not a part of this committee. It was a, it was a way of including others in the community and the BAM community uh, as a part of this process. Okay, thank you. Um, Michelle, I, I liked your suggestion that this perhaps needs some thinking um, so that we could discuss it at the next meeting and, and then have a vote on it as needed. That sounds great. I've added it to a list here that I have run in. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so I know that we had originally said uh, 6.30 to 8, um, and as we're at the top of the hour, I just wanted to sort of uh, check in on people's time since we do have one more item in our in our main action discussion section. Can we get through financials and uh, set a next meeting date <laughs> without anybody <laughs> losing their mind tonight or... Uh... <laughs> Hala, was your hand raised or were you just maybe stretching? Okay. <laughs> um, I think that's a great question, uh, Dr. Jemison. What do other people think? Do we want to go keep going or do we want to move this to our next meeting, which is October 4th, beginning at 6.30? What are we talking about moving? So we would be moving financials, which is the last piece here on our agenda. Um, I will also note that Dr. Shabazz had brought up um, something that is occurring at UMass that I do think is important for us to address tonight. Um, we were going to address it under the 48 hour other topics section of the meeting. I think it's time sensitive um, and I would like to address it tonight and have Dr. Shabazz speak to it tonight. Um, but the other matter would be whether financials is going to happen tonight or be moved to the next meeting. I would like to propose and make a motion that we move them to the next meeting because I had uh, looked at those that item and thought that is those items, uh, that particular item, two items are really broad. Uh, and they needed to be narrowed down um, 
so that we could handle handle them in a proper proper way. Uh, and also, it, it, it wasn't clear to me whether they were just going to be for discussion purposes, informational purposes, or what have you. Um, but they need to be talked about and they need to be clarified as to how we're going to talk about them and bring them up for discussion and then act on. Any other comments? I can't pull up my agenda right now. What was, how was that item described? Uh, I don't know if it's easy to pull up, Angela. Oh, but... I can share screen. Okay, great. So it's uh, item F here, financials. Uh, Thank you. Yep. Thank you. So yeah, I don't think we can, uh, I think what I'd like to say that we uh, look at committing to, uh, to really doing and understanding now having learned tonight on the limitations of, um, of any group of us to, uh, to move to begin to, to develop information or, or, or whatnot uh, without running into open meeting law. I think we do need to think about, because it's gonna involve a calendar. It's gonna involve, if, if we're talking about wanting to talk to the right people about how do we, if this body wants to, how do we make a recommendation to the council to discuss earmarking tax revenue from cannabis sales, then we need to know, we need, we need to get on that calendar. We need to get it on the calendar. If we keep kind of moving it from week to week without taking action, at least to figure out how to have this discussion, how to get the information before us to make a, a, a decision about making such a recommendation, I do worry that we, we may uh, miss the, the window of, uh, of what could be a, a very time sensitive, uh, time sensitive matter. Um, so that would be, uh, and the same goes with getting on the calendar um, or, or how thinking about how do we get the legal information about what a funding, uh, what a fund can do, how a fund should be set up to have the kind of, uh, of target uh, that, that we want to have. Uh, some have said, you know, looking at the, the Community Preservation Act and CPAC as a kind of model, how do we engage in that process of self-education to make certain decisions about that in terms of what we want to recommend in our October report or in our final report? Um, I am concerned that we might miss important time window if we don't begin to think about if that's a direction we want to go, number one, and then number two, how do we ask of uh, of uh, the town uh, uh, administration or of town um, council the, uh, the the information we need to educate ourselves about making such a such an act ask? Yeah, something that comes to mind as you're speaking, Dr. Shabazz, is thinking about what we can do between now and the next meeting. And what we can do is have individual members um, assigned to a particular administrator or counselor that they can call up and chat with and get some information from. So for example, if we think about uh, Andy Steinberg as the chair of the finance committee, if we think about Sean Mangiano, I hope I didn't get that wrong, <laughs> as our finance director, um, and we think about perhaps Alyssa Brewer who has a wealth of information about processes, um, maybe there are like Irv has a great relationship I know with Andy. So maybe between now and then, and this is just a suggestion, but maybe there are three of us that are willing to reach out to these people um, in the interim between now and Monday, and then be able to report those back next week. And that will at least um, get us moving a little bit between now and next time we meet. Oh, wow.
Sir? Well, given the, the lateness of the hour, it, I, I think that uh, my first inclination is to say, is to think, all right, we know that there are going to be, we, we are going to be looking at funds to fund certain programs or projects. That is going to be for certain. However, we haven't decided upon, talked about or discussed what those programs or projects are that we would want to fund. And that seems to me to be something that we need to do. Paul? Thank you. So I think it, these are really, I think you, you do need to have this as an agenda item for next next time you meet. I think there are legal considerations and I'm expecting to get a letter from our town attorney about reparations that will help guide it. I think um, understanding the calendar that Mr. Mangano had talked about a little bit, but clarifying that, like, when are your decision points? You know, the council will be making some financial guidelines in end of November, December. So you want to be there, you want to be on in front of them, you know, early so that they know what your concerns are and your goals are. So I think we can help pull together some documents for you to look at prior to your next meeting. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. Yes, and thank you indeed for that. Um, I, uh, so yes, so if we can, as a uh, agenda item for for next week, um, really talk, try to see if we do have consensus, not on what we're funding, but how we're funding. That's that's my stress, my stress point. We need to talk about how we see building a fund. Right now, the direction I think that has been th that where things have been established with from the free cash or by the end of October. We, uh, uh, Sean Magano talked about this free cash deposit into a fund that has been named for rep for reparative justice. So, if that, um, so it's then to say, are we we looking to recommend how you know certain kinds of uh, how do we think about the recommendation we want to make about that? Are we building that fund up to ten million dollars? Uh, and then it starts to pay out from there. Are we not talking about building up a fund of some amount that would be uh, invested to then fund projects out of that? If we're not, and we're looking at a kind of a one-time thing, I think we've got to look at these options, talk about these options. This is quite apart from, from figuring out where it goes. I think the community needs to inform that. We've talked about BAM as part of a process of the community coming out to inform that, the Black community coming out to inform that decision-making, but the mechanism, the mechanism, what the structure of it's going to look like, how much we're investing, or if we're talking about you know, something more limited, one-time payout, one and done, which I hope we aren't, but we've got to discuss it and make decisions about it to be part of the report we make to get before the, the, the council, as has been mentioned, before they go into November and the possibilities of earmarking certain revenues or whatever uh, uh, will pass us by. That's my comment. Thank you. Earth. Uh, uh, Dr. Shabazz, I guess what um, my thinking is that at the end of the day, that money is going to have to be spent on something, either a project or a program or, or what have you. And if it's going to, you know, uh, for an example, if we decided that, hey, look, we wanted to fund a uh, youth empowerment center or a, a center for youth uh, for entrepreneur, entrepreneurship and um, financial liter literacy, uh, et cetera. Uh, th th that project uh, could be funded in any number of ways, but it could be funded in such a way where, for instance, the, the uh, cannabis 
fund that is there that comes in on a yearly basis and it is consistent is a it is a consistent stream of money uh, that could be tapped into perhaps to uh, do a bonding for. Uh, and, and also um, there are other consistent funding funding streams that could be tapped into to fund projects over a period of time. Uh, and, and, and so therefore knowing what that what a project is going to be makes a lot of sense uh, sense to me uh, uh, because it really would be uh, specific in relationship to how the project was going to be paid for. Additionally, the same thing for a program. Thank you for that. Um, I, if I may jump in here for a minute, what, I, what I'm hearing is that there's a thought that we just need to know sort of where funds can come from and think about whether or not, you know, since, since that is a known universe, which of them do we want to use? And then there's another standpoint of, it's nice to know what we're actually trying to fund so that we can know exactly how much money we need and, and sort of go for, towards getting that amount of money. Those are, those are the two viewpoints that I've heard. And I, I think there's room for, for doing a little bit of both of that, but since where we can get the money from is sort of a known universe, um, I'm suggesting that we get the additional information that we need, um, which was finding out what we need to, to know about what it would take for us to request tax revenue from cannabis sales if we wanna do that and continue this discussion next week. Um, have any objections to that? No objections, but I would make one, one um, clarification of, of what I'm kind of sensing here, because it also came up in the, in the report uh, we had last in the last meeting, and I think I'm kind of hearing it from, from uh, uh, Dr. Rhodes. And that is that it's the idea that this assembly, this body might also be poised to recommend or support reparative justice efforts that might um, uh, be that are being discussed or, or that might be uh, poised to come before the council in its budget cycle that is not necessarily then um, coming out of the funding mechanism we're trying to create for a long-term process, but could come out of projects like uh, uh, other funding sources such as the Community Preservation Act. So for example, with Anika Lopes and her mother, Deborah Bridges, we've been discussing the possibilities for the Civil War tablets long-term. But again, that's not something we have to look at and, 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 and creating educational materials around it, particularly highlighting the African-American presence in, that, in, uh, in, in, in the Civil War. But that's not something we have to then uh, wait on the creation of this funding mechanism uh, justice plan, that's something that we can endorse as a body for coming out of uh, CPAC, coming out of community press. And I get that if that's what we're, what we're raising, we as a body may look to do other than the question of the funding mechanism and how do we create that for a long-term process at least, and I'm speaking out loud to kind of clarify what I think I'm understanding is happening in this meeting. Okay, I, I think we could probably go on um, much longer and I uh, would elect for us to, to move this as a priority and the first item on our agenda um, for our next meeting. Is there any, I see Herb that your hand is up. Is there, is this something that we could move to our next meeting or? Um... I, I, I guess um, there would, I, I don't think there would be, if I would like to be corrected, that, um, that, that I as a member of, of a committee could have say in a formal meeting with uh, Sean to go over some things that I was thinking about to see how realistic they are, were and then bring that back on Monday. 
because uh, if what I'm thinking is totally unrealistic, then there's no re uh, reason to go forward. Or on the other hand, to find out how to go forward with it, how to propose it, how to bring it before the town, how to bring it before the council. So I, I guess in my mind, uh, given what's, how my mind is working, is to say, all right, um, there, we're going to need some financial instruments. We're going to need some financial uh, way, ways of doing this. What are some possible ways of doing it? Uh, and to uh, get that done shortly rather than um, in, 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 in the long term. In other words, what are the possibilities? You know, is, is, is what I'm thinking and what other people are thinking totally uh, insane or whatever? And then uh, by doing that, at least we get one thing done. Uh, and then uh, the, obviously the other part of that would then come in with the uh, legal parameters, which I think we need to get done like ASAP. Um, I mean, really ASAP. Uh, so anyway, that's what I would like to do. And I don't think there's anything that would prevent me from doing that as a member of this uh, of this committee. Is there, Paul? <laughs> the only thing that might prevent you is if uh, Mr. Mangano's became a new father a couple days ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, is, he, is, he, is there parental leave? <laughs> well, he's trying to, but I know he's very dedicated. So I will work with, we can work with him. Uh, he's coming, has some truncate, truncated time, but I think you're right. This is a high priority and I, I can work with him to make sure we get answer, answers to your questions. All right. So I'll, I, will, I will be in contact with you tomorrow morning, Paul. Okay. Great. So, um, then with that all said, we could move to, are there any upcoming events that anybody would like to announce? Angela, I don't know if there's anything on your end or town manager Bachelman or any of the members of the committee have an upcoming event to announce. Dr. Shabazz? Thank you. I can send to uh, the town manager's office for distribution. Can you hear me? Yes. I can send to the town manager's office for distribution <clears throat> the link and information about <clears throat> an upcoming statewide uh, reparations conversation. Um, it is scheduled for Thursday in two days. Uh, and uh, at 5 p.m., and there is a link to register. It is a, a statewide conversation that involves uh, participation and collaboration of a group out of, um, out of Boston called King Boston, in addition with uh, uh, in COBRA, the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America, New England region. And so... Uh, important because one of the things I was observing in looking at the Community Preservation Act is realizing that that structure came from a statewide act and then local municipalities responded to that statewide act by setting up um, the uh, by setting up uh, uh, ordinances and processes in place to uh, uh, to tax themselves and with matching support from the state. So it's possible that this statewide conversation might be headed in some similar direction to create structure and form and support from uh, our uh, from the general court from our from our state legislature, and that could be very important to uh, work like ours and other municipalities in the Commonwealth going forward. So look for that information on Thursday for the meeting on Thursday. Okay, and so our next meeting date we've already established, um, it's Monday, October 4th at 6.30. 
Uh, does the group want to make another meeting date now or wait until the next meeting? My suggestion is we try to get one now if we can, just because schedules are going to get so busy. Um, and I think we talked about alternating um, with the town council meetings. So um, town manager Buckelman, um, do is there a town council meeting on the 11th? Angela is shaking her head. Oh, sorry, Angela, <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the calendar. I'm showing October 4th, October 18th, November 8th, November 15th. Uh, October, 11th, October 11th is Indigenous Peoples Day. Yeah. Okay, okay. So there is a meeting on, on October 4th and we're meeting that night. Um, so would the 12th be an option at 6.30 for people, Tuesday the 12th? I'm going to request that we not actually, I, I'm sorry, I was mistaken thinking I could do both and regional school committees every other week, Amherst school committees every other week. So I have a school committee meeting every Tuesday and I apologize for my misunderstanding. So I would request, did I not be on two public meetings at the same time if we can avoid it? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Please and thank you. Okay. So that's a no for the 12th for me. Yeah, so that's every other Monday or I know Wednesdays also started to cause trouble, so. Yes, and Jennifer can't meet on Thursdays until uh, November. So um, let's see here. Michelle, since this is something that you and I can do, yeah. can we can we table can we do this <laughs> and take oh, take this pain away from everyone else? <laughs> Very compassionate. Yes, <laughs> we can. Um, it, we'll we'll take on that misery. Um, and uh, I know that uh, you'd still wanted to possibly speak to the to the UMass incidents. Um, I, 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 I would appreciate if we could maybe keep a time limit on that <laughs> as we're close Absolutely. to 30 minutes over already, but I agree it needs to be addressed. Yes, and if Dr. Shabazz, if you could address it briefly, and then most importantly, we are seeking um, consensus from this group to ask um, our town council president to take action based on the events that Dr. Shabazz is going to speak about briefly. Yes, I'll be very brief. Um, we simply have very hateful on the campus and students, particularly those in the membership and leadership of station uh, uh, and um, uh, it, 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 it speaks to everything we don't want in Amherst. And I think a, uh, a um, consistent with the uh, 2020 statements of the resolutions of the, of the council, I think it would be uh, appropriate to speak out. I know there's been concern in trying to tell like a, a private corporation, even though a, a state nonprofit how to conduct itself, but this isn't to tell them to how to do any to do anything, but just encouraging support for the students on the campus. Yes, and in speaking with Robin today um, from First Repair, she had suggested that our committee make a statement um, with respect to these events that have occurred at UMass, and um, it seems to make more sense to ask the town council to make a statement, sort of as chance the chancellor of UMass has done, and the chancellor of diversity, equity, and inclusion at UMass has also done, just to acknowledge these events and refer to our resolution. Um, so the question to this body would be, um, is there an, a, 
agreement that we can, um, that uh, myself and Dr. Jemison can reach out to our, our town council president and let her know what has occurred, um, provide her the chancellor's statements, um, and then ask for that action to be taken. If there aren't, if there's no issue with it, um, we do, I think Dr. Shabazz has prepared a motion um, getting consensus of the group, but I'm not sure that we necessarily need it if there's no objection to having us reach out and do that. Alexis, do you, I see you shaking your head. Do you, did you want to say something? Okay. You're good with it. Okay. Yeah. I'm in agreement. Yeah. Okay. Is anybody not in agreement? I guess is the question. Okay, good. So we'll go ahead and, and we will reach out to um, Councilor Greismer and uh, we'll include town manager Bockelman on that as well. And, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's can I just add one thing for next time? We didn't, we didn't discuss a secretary or elect a secretary. And I guess I, 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 I don't need to talk about it now, but maybe that's something we should talk about next time. Yeah, how does that usually work, uh, Paul? Is does the staff liaison provide that sort of help, or so? If if there's a member who wants to take minutes, that's that's always welcome. But if not, we will have someone who can support you through doing minutes. And I think that's what Angela is here for tonight to help not just facilitate the meeting, but is taking notes to do your minutes for you. But if there's someone there who says, "Boy, I really miss. I would love to do minutes," <laughs> we would welcome that too. <laughs> So, but otherwise, we, we got it. Thank you, Alexis. There, yeah, that's a great question. And if there are any agenda items other than the one that we already spoke about, uh, or the two, um, which is the financial conversation and the uh, BAM liaison are the two items that I have noted. If there are any other items, um, they could be mentioned now or just emailed um, to Dr. Jemison and myself. Um, and if you don't have our emails, we'll find a way to get them to you between now <laughs> and the next meeting. And otherwise we are ready to adjourn the meeting if everybody, if there's nothing else. I move to adjourn. Second. Wonderful. All right. Thank you very Thank much, you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank great you, week. Angela. Yes. Thank you, Angela. <laughs>